there's the next question, which says that express 2x square plus 12x plus 11 in this completed square form. All right, get started. So we have 2x squared plus 12x plus 11. I'm going to take two common from the first two. Then I'm going to apply the identity on it, a square plus 2a, b should be 3, so that it becomes 6x again, and plus b square and minus b square plus 11. So these three combined give us, let me use bigger brackets here, this gives us x plus 3 whole square, then a minus 9, and then a plus 11, which becomes 2 x plus 3 whole squared minus 18 plus 11, which get, becomes 2 x plus 3 whole squared minus 7. This would be the completed square form. Okay. Next would be find an expression for f inverse of x. Also, now it says that the domain of fx is less than equals to minus 4. Let me note this down. So for part B, we're going to use the completed square form of fx, not the original given form. So fx is now 2 times x plus 3 whole squared minus 7. And its domain is very important, which is less than equals to minus. Okay, now we need an expression for f inverse of x and then its domain. So y equals 2 x plus 3 whole squared minus 7. Minus 7 goes to the other side, becomes plus 7. 2 goes to the other side, gets divided. Square has to be eliminated by taking square root on both sides. And then we write plus minus here. And then we have x plus 3 on the right-hand side. 3 goes to the other side, becomes minus 3. So this is equals to x. So we have f inverse of x equals minus 3 plus or minus before square root, we're yet to decide, and then square root x plus seven upon two. Okay. Now, do we choose this plus sign or this minus sign? That depends on this. X is less than and equals to minus four. So X is decreasing. So we're also going to use a negative sign here. And this is F inverse of X. Okay. Now we need its domain. So domain of F inverse, equals range of f. Now for range of f, we go back to this. It was fx equals 2 times x plus 3 whole squared minus 7 with x is less than equals to minus 4. Okay. If we plug in minus 4 here, we get negative 1 whole squared, which will be 1. So 2 times 1 minus 7 will be minus 5. So fx is... Uh, minus 5 when x is equals to minus 4. Now, as we start to decrease the value of x, for example, x becomes minus 5 or minus 20 or minus 80 or minus 90, then notice that since there's a square here, the value of fx keep increasing and increasing and increasing. So, the range of fx is, fx is greater than equals to minus 5 because minus 5 is the smallest value that fx can take. Okay. That is the range of f. That means it is also the domain of f inverse. So we write x is greater than or equals to minus 5. That is the domain of f inverse of x. Okay. Next it says that function g is defined for gx equals to x minus 3 and x is less than or equals to k. For the case where k is equals to minus 1, solve the equation f g x equals 193. Let me make space for that. Okay. I'm going to keep fx in its domain because it's most likely going to be used later again. So for c, g x equals 2x minus 3. And for now, x is less than and equals to negative 1. Okay, now we have to solve the equation f g equals 193. 
Okay, before we start solving it, you need to keep one thing in mind that FG's uh, domain lies within the domain of G. So what's the domain of G? The domain of G is this. So that means whatever is the value of X we get in the end after solving this function, FG is equals to 193, that should also be less than and equals to negative one because the domain of FG is equals to the domain of G or it lies within the domain. So if one of your answers is, let's say, positive, then you will have to ignore that answer because x is only going to be less than and equals to negative 1. OK, now let's plug in g and f. So uh, we'll have 2. And then we'll, have, we'll replace this with 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3. Then there's a plus 3. Whole squared, negative 7. So it's going to be. 2 times 2x whole squared minus 7. That's going to be 2 times 4x squared minus 7. That's going to be 8x squared minus 7. And we have to equate it to uh, 193. So now we will have... 193 plus 7 divided by 8 is 25. So x is coming out to be plus minus 5. But x can only be less than and equals to negative 1. So our only answer is minus 5 because x is less than and equals to negative 1. Okay. Next it says state the greatest possible value of k for which the composition fg is to be defined. Okay, let us clear all of this. Okay, now the domain of g is back to being k and we have to find largest possible value of k. Okay, now when is the composition fg possible? That is possible when we are actually feeding g to f. Okay, now the output of G should lie within the input of F. In other words, a uh, range of G must lie within domain of F. Okay, so what is the output of G? Output of G is 2x minus 3. Okay, so 2x minus 3 because you feed some x into it and it changes into 2x minus 3. So this 2x minus 3 should lie within the domain of F. And what was the domain of F? It was less than and equals to minus 4. So we write less than and equals to minus 4 here. Solve this, we get 2x less than and equals to negative 1. So x is less than and equals to negative half. And that is going to be the value of k, negative half. k equals negative half. 